The Time Machine Chapter 5 The Sunset of Mankind As the full moon rises, the time traveler looks back to where he left the time machine only to discover it has vanished. Terrified, he races back to the little lawn where he landed. Now he feels the presence of an unseen but powerful force because he does not believe the little people are strong enough to have moved the machine. Searching the area, he startles some sort of white animal that he takes for a small deer, but he does not find the machine. Weeping, the time traveler falls asleep. The next morning, he wakes up, determined to make the best of his situation. If he cannot find the machine, he will learn the ways of this new civilization. He may be able to make another machine. Questioning the little people, he gets no help. Examining the lawn more closely, he notices a single groove and narrow footprints leading to the pedestal on which the white sphinx stands. Knocking on the pedestal, he discovers it is hollow, which leads him to believe the machine is inside. He bangs away at the bronze to no avail. Giving up on the pedestal, he explores the surrounding countryside. He comes across certain circular wells, huge and ringed with bronze. That same day, he rescues a drowning woman from the river. Her name is Weena. She follows him wherever he goes, and they become a pair. He meets a queer little ape-like figure that runs away when he touches it. Following it, he watches as it climbs down a ladder on the inside of one of the wells. Now he wonders if man had not remained one species, but had differentiated into two distinct animals. He concludes that this second species has evolved as an underground creature. That is why it is white, like most animals that live in the dark. It has large eyes and avoids the daylight. There must be a vast system of underground tunnels. All of this, he concludes, is the inevitable result of a gradual widening of the gap between the capitalist and the laborer. The latter built the subways and railroads. The former got better educated and more refined. So now above ground you must have the haves and below ground the have-nots, as the workers became more and more adapted to being laborers. Meanwhile, the upper wordless had suffered a general dwindling of size, strength, and intelligence. 
The future success of humankind has not turned out to be one of general cooperation. Instead, there are Morlocks and Aloy, as he discovers they are called.